discussion. I'm joined now by Arturo Lopez Levy via Skype. He's a lecturer at the University of Texas and co-author of Raul Castro and the New Cuba, a close-up view of change. Uh, we're getting a close-up look at uh, change, and, and we're also seeing a lot of Raul Castro. Um, talk to me about the symbolism and the substance of this trip, because we're seeing some of both. How important, how important are both, and what's standing out for you? Mike, people are talking about this trip as a milestone in history, and they mentioned that the previous visit to Cuba by a U.S. president was 80 years ago, but I will go further. It's the first time an American leader addressed the Cuban people, the Cuban state, the Cuban society, the Cuban nation, with so much respect as President Obama has done it. And this is very important because the Cuban culture is very nationalistic. And for quite a long time, they, it has been almost an internal issue to take a position in favor of Cuban sovereignty and demand respect from the United States. From the United States. This, Mike, has colored even the discussion about democratic development, economic development. The position against the embargo has been associated with a position against all the historic problems that Cuba and the United States has had. So today we are uh, uh, seeing history in the making, and many people in Cuba, uh, not only Raul Castro, uh, spoke with uh, uh, this, the same kindness about the, uh, the welcome that they gave to President Obama. There is a few hardliners there. Uh, there is a, a, a blog called La Pupila Insomni, in which there has been a lot of reservation about Obama's presence there. But it is clear that from Raul Castro to everybody in the government or, or, or the, the people to, to uh, uh, the pragmatic forces in the government and the people in the society, President Obama is quite a popular leader in Cuba today. Arturo uh, Raul Castro, on the same stage as the leader of the United States, he really held his own with the U.S. president and, and Western reporters as well, still pushing for an end to the embargo, a return of Guantanamo Bay. Also rather pugnacious uh, when a Western reporter asked him about political prisoners, he said, quote, what political prisoners? Give me a name or names, or after this meeting is over, you can give me a list of political prisoners, and if we have those political prisoners, uh, they'll be released before tonight ends. He was feisty, uh, but really kind of holding his own. What, what did you make of that? Well, I think that we need to admit clearly, and the two leaders already admitted, that between Cuba and the United States are great differences in terms of the values that lead their systems. But relationship between two countries are not only about differences of values. There are significant mutual interests of security, of economic cooperation, of educational and cultural exchanges that are present there. And for 50 years, all those issues had been uh, put in hold, on hold because of those disagreements and the ideas of a group of people in, in America that they would like to take revenge and recover the type of subordination ties that Cuba and the United States had in the past. I think that the human rights issue is beginning to be addressed in a within a controllable range. Cuba has deviation from international human rights standards. There is a discussion about how many prisoners of conscience are there. Uh, the right to free assembly and to free association and free expression has important limitations. But the United States also has some problems. So I think that President Obama behaved with the dignity and clarity of a democratic leader and basically admit those differences. He didn't apologize for his, apologize for his values, but he uh, 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 basically adopted a pragmatic attitude to have a relationship beyond those differences, Mike. Uh, both men want the embargo lifted, uh, and, and Obama's uh, visit in many ways, doesn't it apply more pressure on Congress to actually lift the embargo at some point because you've got businesses now clamoring, wanting to go into Cuba and, and do business with the Cuban people. Uh, is there going to be more and more pressure on, on Washington, the, the members of Congress, to actually lift that embargo, do you think? The, the moment when President Obama chose to visit Cuba was not a coincidence. It happened just after the primary in Florida, and the issue of the policy towards Cuba was a central 
theme of debate in the Republican primary. The main uh, 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 politicians promoting the embargo was basically defeated astoundingly in Florida, Senator Marco Rubio, and President Obama is using his visit to promote a virtuous cycle in which constituencies are promoted along the trip issue, the travel issue, along business, along connection to internet, along the sale to Cuba of agricultural construction equipment, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. And the, the hope is that the more travelers, the more business, the pressure on Congress will double. So I think that it is, uh, rather than the culmination of a process of normalization, is an um, important station that try to uh, 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 empower more the forces within the American political system that are in favor of, a new poly of, of the new pro approach to Cuba. Arturo, thanks so much for joining us from the state of Texas. Certainly appreciate it.